So also pushed out a new firmware this uh, weekend. And uh, right now this is uh, called the uh, 115 and it's available for Android. And um, you need to download the updated version of the Autel Sky app first. And after that, you can update or you're being prompted to, uh, to update the firmware on the aircraft with a firmware update that is called 117. And that takes this mandatory 15 minutes uh, to do this uh, update. But once this is uh, completed, you have access to some pretty sweet new stuff here with the Nano Plus. And today, the weather is not that bad. So we can take it out for a test flight so I can show you what it's all about. And the first thing that you see is a, <laughs> it's shown right in the front of the screen. And that is a, a button that will allow you to change between manual and autofocus. I had some problems, uh, at least uh, during some of my trials, uh, that I couldn't get the drone to focus properly. So hopefully, hopefully this will mitigate uh, that issue. For those of you that has uh, seen some of my previous videos, you might know this uh, stadium here. This is a football stadium. Uh, we were not, it was not possible for me to film this the last time I was here because it was very, very windy. But today the, the wind is uh, not that crazy. It's actually very calm. So we should have a chance to uh, at least uh, take a few photos, which is one of the super nice things that is finally become available for the Nano Plus, is the capabilities of being able to take 50 megapixel photos. I will take one standard photo and one 50 megapixel photo of this um, stadium, and I will make those, uh, make those uh, photos available through the Tech Drone Media website, so you can download it and play around with them for yourself. Before we get to that part, let's look a little bit about some of the other exciting stuff that is available here. In video mode, one of the complaints was that there was only the possibility to record in 30 frames per second uh, default. But that has changed a lot, especially if you bump it down to 1080p, you can go up to 60 FPS on uh, this small drone. If we take the resolution up to 4K, the maximum resolution will still be 30 FPS, but you have now 25 and 24 FPS available. So I think a lot of you will appreciate that, especially if 25 FPS, that is the standard, the PAL standard in Europe, and 24 FPS is uh, sort of what you, what you want to use if you want to have this uh, nice uh, cinematic look and feel to your footage. I normally use 30 FPS, so let's just for now, let it stay there. Let's just Start do recording. a little bit of reference video here while... So it's not getting too boring here. I'm just doing like a manual point of interest. So, so let's just leave it here. The manual focus, we have covered that. In the, so if you're in pro mode, you can see some uh, nice stuff down here. You can see the shutter speed, you can see the ISO, you can see the EV value, and you can see the current white balance settings, as well as an estimate of how many photos remaining on your current SD card. If I switch it into video, you can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why that is not possible, but at least it was visible. It's not super stable here. You're, you're supposed to be able to see the current settings for your drone here in the lower right corner. So let's just jump back to video. Let me show you a few other things that is possible here that maybe works a little bit better. Transmission, you have the possibility to do like an image transmission background effect. So if I enable that, you can see the, the lines here on the side, they are getting like frosted. So they are not so apparent as they are in black. You can switch between smooth HD and uh, 2.7K for the image transmission mode. And I would assume that you would need to go down to 2.7K here and go under image transmission here again. Then at least you can switch it to HD. 
And for some reason, I can't enable 2.7K as it is right now. Maybe the drone is too far away, but it doesn't seem like it. I can at least see it from here. So you can play around with that. And uh, I only have this single battery, so I need to make sure that it counts. So now we are getting to the point that you have all Stop been waiting me. for probably, is to see what uh, is it about these 50 megapixel photos. And let's just look here. Right now it's set to a single photo in uh, the normal 12.5 megapixel, and we will take an image of that. Then we go in under here and we bump the resolution to 50 megapixel. And right now this is only available in JPEG. But as I said, I will make those photos available so you can download them through the TechDrone Media website and uh, the link will be in the description below. So now we have two reference photos there. Let's just do maybe a few more. So let's just repeat this and see if we can get the same exposure on, on the image here. So let's use this this blue area down here, the corner of this blue area, and then take one photo and then switch it into the 12.5 megapixel and then press the same area again, oh, it's almost the same, same area again, and take another photo. So now you should at least have two images that will allow you to do this. And as I can see on the battery level here, I might need to head back. <laughs> as it is right now. Okay, so let's just try and play around here a little bit here before we are completely out of battery. So let's just put it in pro mode here. So now it's in pro mode. Take a photo here. Switch it into video mode. I don't like that the video feed is cutting out like that. That is uh, really, really unpleasant. So, now it's in photo mode. Let's just go in and check the image transmission here. So right now I can only, still only make, I can only choose smooth as it is right now. So if you might know how to enable <laughs> the 2.7K, because the drone is just above the car here. So it's, uh, it shouldn't be like much of an issue. Stop recording. So? Stop recording. The aircraft battery is low. Please return to home. This was a first flight with the new app update 115 that's currently only available for Android and the firmware update for the aircraft that is called 117. I have kind of mixed emotions. It's a lot of great features that are becoming available with this update, but I have had a few glitches flying around where I lost the camera feed for the drone. Also, I maybe it's me that couldn't figure it out <laughs> while recording the video. I had problems forcing the camera feed into 2.7K, where HD seems to be the only available option apart from smooth. Also, I couldn't consistently make the camera setting show in the lower right corner. Maybe it's because I'm so used to using the other Fly apps that I haven't yet gotten around to being fully comfortable with the Auto Sky app. Auto and manual focus seems to work nicely as well as the possibility to change frame rate, which is always super nice to have those options. And then of course there's the 50 megapixel uh, images uh, which you can uh, check out by yourself through the link in the description below. That's also a very nice thing and also very impressive with a drone of this size. Unfortunately right now for the nerdy ones of you that like to post process your images, RAW is not yet available. I hope you like this video and if you have some tips for me to uh, resolve these uh, issues that I saw during the flight, then let me know in the comment below. And if you like this video, then consider giving it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.